Welcome folks to the Earth Tool Service Department. Uh, we're going to do a little video here on uh, a very common service procedure on a BCS or any walk behind tractor uh, that uses control cables and that is replacement of a control cable. Uh, here today we've got an old BCS 850 in the shop uh, that's undergoing various repairs but one of the things it needs is a new clutch cable uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and put it on there. I've got my, my new cable in the here. When you buy a new cable for a walk behind tractor, uh, a new control cable that is, it's going to come with both the inner cable and the outer sheath. So both parts come as, as one part number. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the old cable off. Now in a lot of cases, um, the old cable will have been broken already, so you won't have to go through the removal process. In this case, the cable is just kind of frayed and rusty, so we're going to replace it just as a matter of course. But typically, your cable would already be broken. And actually, um, what I'm doing right now is loosening the cable clamp on the end of the cable here. I'm going to work this cable clamp off. It always, uh, where the cable clamp was tightened on there, it typically buggers up the cable a little bit, so getting it off requires a little bit of effort. There's the clamp, perfectly reusable. I'll set that aside for now. And we'll thread the cable back out of here. On the end of this, there is a little cable sleeve that directs the end of the sheathing into this support. Uh, not all BCS cables have this sleeve, but some do. It just depends on the model. Uh, but if it's there, don't throw it away at the cable. It does not come with the new cable. You have to take it off the old one and save it. Let's put that there. Let's back up here to the top of the handlebars where this cable goes into the clutch handle mechanism. Now, depending on the age of your BCS machine and the particular model, this might look a little different. This one is uh, probably about a 90 six model machine, 97 model machine. But it, this is pretty accurate for the machines from that period up till about today. Uh, they haven't really changed this. Um, so anyway, what I'm gonna do, now, well, the most common failure on the clutch cable is that they actually break right up here in the handle. That is where the top end of the cable, let me grab the new one. The top end of the cable has a little end centered onto it, a little plug end. And that plug end, usually the cable will break right around here, or maybe right around the end where that cable gets flexed every time. Somebody else will hopefully answer the phone. Um, but when, every time you squeeze that lever, that cable undergoes a little bit of flex there and eventually it'll just snap the end off. So if your cable's already snapped there, you don't need to worry about taking it apart like I'm going to do now. But if your cable had broken at the bottom end or if you're just replacing a rusty cable, of course, you need to take this apart. So what I'm going to do, I've already undone the cable at the bottom, as you saw. I'm going to pull this sheath away from here. I can do this now because the bottom end of the cable is undone, so I've got some slack in the cable. I'm going to pull this away from here. Urgh. It's difficult to get it out of there because I'm trying to pull this buggered end where the cable clamp was back through the sheath. Uh, but I think I've exposed enough now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this back up and then you can see the end of the cable becoming exposed here at the top. So that's great. Now I'm going to take a wire cutters. Or if the cable is broken, you just pull this on out of there. But this cable is not completely broken. And that end in the bottom is so buggered up, I'm not going to be able to pull it back through here. So I'm just going to cut this top end off. And I'm going to pull the cable out here. And the old cable is shot. We're going to throw it away. Now note, what holds the cable into this lever is this little pin. And on the other side of the pin, we'll come around here with the camera. And you can see the other end of this pin has a slot. The slot goes all the way, most of the way through the pin, and that cable actually runs through the slot. Now, you could pull this pin out of here, but you really don't need to do that, and you don't want to do that. Um, and the reason is that there, there is a spring right here, and this spring on these later model machines, this spring is actually pushing this handle up, as you can see. This, the idea of the spring is to gently take the slack out of the clutch cable so that you don't have to reach down so far when you grab the handle. So it kind of gently pulls up what little bit of slack is in the cable so, well, to make it easier on you. Well, that spring is actually pushing on that pin internally. You can't see it from the outside here, but the, the other end of this spring is pushing back on that pin, and that's what's pushing this up. If you pull this pin out of here now, 
that spring goes boink like this, and boy, getting it pushed back down to get the pin back through is an act of Congress. And, you know, Congress hasn't been too cooperative lately, so we don't want to fool with them. Um, so now I'm, I'm going to take my old cable off. Just pay attention to how the cable is threaded through the handlebars because you're going to want to thread the new cable the same way. This is garbage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the old, or I'm, I'm sorry, this is the new cable. I'm pulling it out of the sheath. I'll lay that aside here. You know, it's got some oil on it from the factory, so you don't want to just lay it on the ground because it'll get all gritty. So I'm going to go ahead and just thread the sheath through where it needs to go. The, the upper and lower ends of the sheath are the same, so there's no difference there. Get this threaded through here. All right, so that's good. All right, and this end plugs into the adjustment screw. Now, this is the adjustment screw for adjusting the tension of the clutch cable. It's the easiest way to adjust the tension. I'm gonna grab a wrench here. The other way to adjust the tension, of course, is with the cable clamp at the end of the cable. But typically, this is the much easier way to adjust it because it's a very fine adjustment that doesn't bugger up the cable every time you move it. So adjusting the cable, and we have a clutch adjustment video that you can watch. I'm not going to get into that on this video. So backing it out like this would move the sheathing out away from the anchor point and, and remove slack from the cable. Putting, screwing it back in this way puts slack in the cable or increases slack. So what we're going to do since we're replacing this cable, I'm going to go ahead and screw this screw in most of the way. That will give me almost a full adjustment screw of adjustment coming out because that cable is going to stretch over time. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, actually let me pull this back out of here. Uh, I'm going to take the opportunity while this cable is out of the sheath to add some lubricant. The factory has put a little lubricant down in the sheathing. That's why this cable is slightly tacky and I told you not to lay it in the dust. Well, it could use some more. So a Teflon-based lubricant, silicon-based lubricant, or graphite-based lubricant, or the fluid film, which is a lanolin-based lubricant. This is a little more planet-friendly since lanolin is a product of sheep's wool. Everybody likes shoving little sheep down those holes. No, never mind. Um, but the, the lanolin-based lubricant is, is excellent stuff, and if you can get it in your area, I recommend it. But squirting it down in the cable sheath like that will increase the life of the cable and make it a little easier to use. So now I'm ready to thread this back through. So I've got to, and this is where I should have brought my glasses. So I have to thread it back through that slotted pin, get it up, or if you could bring the camera right around here, you can see the cable right here as I bring it through that slotted pin. Now I'm going to direct it up into that adjustment bolt, which I think I did. Yes, there it is. So it's through the adjustment bolt and now down the cable, or down the sheathing, sorry. And then just feed it on through. Of course, the end of this cable has never been in a clamp, so it's not all boogered up. It slides easily through the sheathing. We're going to pull it all the way down. There it is. It's all exposed at the bottom. And then you want to make sure that it's, it's fully seated into that pin at the top. Uh, the pin at the top has a little indent on it. And I don't know if you can see, the light may not be good enough in there. But uh, if, it, if it's fully seated down in there, the head, of the, the head of that little button on the cable is basically flush with the pin. And it is in this case. Now, on some clutch cables you'll replace, this little, this little sleeve that I mentioned that was on the bottom on this one, sometimes this is at the top and the adjustment bolt is at the bottom. It depends on the tractor model um, and brand. So just wherever you found the components, they need to go back. Um, so I'm gonna redirect this through here, get that sent down into there. There's my clutch lever. Uh, this, of course, has a high hole that lines up with this hole. This, this particular clutch fork has two holes. If this uh, support were lower and had a hole down here, of course, I would line it up with that hole. You would you, you want to keep that cable as straight as possible. Thread this back on there. And what I'll do is just by hand kind of pull the slack out of the cable and, you know, slide that clamp up against there. And I'm going to leave a little more slack in there. I'm not going to pull it completely tight. And I'm going to just give it a little tension there. And then I'll go back to the top of the handle and see how much, how it feels. Now this feels good. I'm, I'm, we got all this free play. 
and I've got that much clutch. I'm actually pulling the clutch right there. So that feels good. That's, that's about what it should be on a BCS tractor. Um, once we get the engine running, we'll do the fine adjustment. I might need to take a little more slack out of it, but I can easily do that at the top because I've got a full adjustment screw here. So that's the procedure. Now that I know my cable tension is pretty close to right, I'm gonna go ahead and give this an extra little twist. Make sure that stays on there good. But the same basic procedure can be used for all the cables on the machine, whether it be the brakes, the forward reverse, the differential lock, or anything like that. The, 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 the system is the same. On many of the other levers, you don't have to deal with this spring I talked about in the clutch lever. That's pretty much specific to the clutch. All these other ones, they just the handles just flop all the way down, and you can pull these pins out once the cable's not in there and not have a problem because you don't really need to pull them out because you can thread the cable through. So just whatever's more convenient for you. And I think that pretty much gets it for this video. Thanks for watching.